I'm going to explain how Fluence works without like really deep technical details, so I hope it would be uh, clear for everyone. So we think of Fluence as a three big components. It's a compute marketplace, so it's a global um, network of compute providers who contribute their resources, bring to the marketplace and make them available for consumers of these resources. And consumers of these resources are mainly developers who develop and deploy applications to this network. And they use what we call cloudless stack to create in, and deploy applications. And then all this um, network of providers and, and, and the stack and the platform development is managed by the DAO that Tom just um, announced. So first of all, Compute Marketplace. Um, it's open, permissionless, on-chain registry of providers. Anyone can be provider. Um, we mainly target professional providers because we kind of trying to replace um, professional production enterprise grade cloud platforms that run really like reliable hardware in data centers. So we mainly target as providers, we mainly target professional hardware, you know, in a good places in, in, with, with great connection, um, with, with great performance. Um, by default, payments on, on the marketplace happen in stable coins. We use USDC as, as initial, you know, um, initial payment token. Uh, potentially, we will open, um, you know, payment tokens to be, to be other tokens that providers can accept. So, like, potential users should be able to pay in any token if some providers accept it. Uh, but by default, it's stable coins because providers account their resources in stable coin. Like they pay in fiat for hardware, they pay in fiat for electricity. It's important for them to have a more uh, stable, predictable income. And every provider is different. Every provider is, is like a company, uh, you know, that uh, has, um, computational power somewhere, and they also have some skills or some services, additional services that they can provide um, in, in addition to pure computation. So for example, they run databases, they, they can um, provide access to basically external world for the computation, like making HTTP requests, some external APIs, or other services that are also like some sort of analogies to cloud services that, that we can find like in Amazon. Um, and all of them run different services. So these services should be discoverable on the marketplace and, and developers should be able to find them and select with which providers they want to work with. Um, the measure of computing account, like of accounting the compute resources we call compute unit, which is one physical core of the CPU, four gigabytes of RAM and 10 gigabytes of virtual disk. So basically uh, providers um, allocate such compute units in their physical machines, in their servers, and they, then they run a lot of servers, and basically they run one Fluence node per server, per physical machine. That is what is what we recommend. So compute providers basically have a lot of such compute units across their um, physical infrastructure. Um, the next thing is um, proof capacity. And this is something that what we discussed with Juan is, is kind of very similar to what Filecoin created to onboard storage into the network. So proof capacity is crypto economic system uh, that basically ensures that some um, compute capacity that was announced to the marketplace actually exists. So it exists and it's, it was provisioned, uh, it's allocated to a network, connected, and has certain performance. So um, basically we're using RandomX algorithm to that um, providers run to prove that they still have this hardware allocated to the network. And as a part of this um, uh, system, they have to stake tokens. So basically they stake tokens for every compute unit. Um, and if this compute unit, unit stops uh, providing proofs, uh, these tokens may be slashed. So basically, they, like they are incentivized to keep running this, um, and for the for running these compute units, um, for in these proofs for every compute unit, they get rewarded by protocol with additional Fluence tokens. Um, and the idea is that this way we can guarantee that the hardware that was announced and advertised on the marketplace actually exists. So if a customer comes and wants to rent some of this hardware, they can really take it. So whenever customer jobs comes, 
these compute units being reallocated from running proof of capacity to executing customer jobs. Um, they, in our case, they're executing cloudless functions. I'm going to touch on it a little later. And this um, token stake that is allocated with compute unit uh, will, be, will serve as a security deposit for the correctness of the, of the job execution. So uh, this token will be basically transferred together with a compute unit to uh, the job. And if the job was not executed correctly, uh, this stake may be lost. Um, and if it's executed correctly, of course, this job will be paid by a customer in stablecoin, as I, as I said before. Um, so basically, providers constantly have this, some of their resources um, uh, working on proof of capacity, some of their resources allocated to customer jobs. And there is some balance um, between all of this. And additionally, token rewards for running proof of capacity are vested over time, so providers are incentivized to keep, uh, to, to, to keep um, this hardware connected. Uh, to you know to earn maximum amount of rewards because if they disconnect they can lo lose um, unvested um, token rewards so this way we can achieve like a much more stability of the supply side of the marketplace so it's not like a moving very fast um, in terms of like growing and, and decreasing the the uh, capacity and marketplace is built like on top of um, Fluence chain, like basically like it runs on the Fluence chain, which is powered by interplanetary consensus or IPC, which allows us to have um, you know high scalability and performance, um, and you know we run all the like transaction settlement in there, we run proof validation in there, but actual computation and compute units they run off chain um, on like on physical machines, and also like we like IPC in. in um, because it's uh, uh, built by Falcon team, and it basically allows us to be close to Filecoin, like massive amounts of Filecoin data, so we can actually run, so we can bring computation to data, and we can run it efficiently. Um, so this is like this is super exciting. The the next thing is the cloudless stack, and, and this is the development stack that everyone uh, who want to use Fluence um, is using, and. The core component of cloudless stack is what we call cloudless function. So cloudless function is basically a piece of code that runs on top of distributed uh, infrastructure of, of nodes, on top of distributed network. And um, what is great about this, um, this, what is special about cloudless functions is actually they are not being executed at particular machine or particular node they kind of run uh, on top of the network. They kind of run between the nodes. And um, the way it works is that um, basically cloudless functions express the uh, topology of the execution step by step. So for example, you have some um, you know, business uh, use case where you need to um, collect um, crypto asset price from several uh, providers, several nodes, or you know, several sources, then you want to uh, calculate the average of this price or have some quorum and then process this um, price and send it to some client that expect to get it. And this can be executed as a, you know, step-by-step -step algorithm on the network where, you know, different nodes are responsible for different step of this. Like the first nodes basically provide the source data, uh, the second group of nodes agrees on the average or on the consensus, and the other nodes work as a relayer and send it to customer. So cloudless function expresses this workflow and basically makes sure that this workflow being executed across this uh, big group of nodes that are involved. And um, cloudless functions basically can be executed, is, is a distributed execution, right? So they can be executed and, and on top of um, different external services. They can access storage, they can access databases, they can connect to blockchains, they can you know, connect to nodes and ask them to execute some complex um, compute task. And uh, this way you can basically um, describe any kind of computational task. You have this distributed workflow, and then distributed workflow touches, like for example, you have the event that happens on blockchain, uh, that triggers the uh, execution of some WebAssembly function, then it you know, writes the result into database and send it to some client via HTTP. So this is workflow, it's, it's described as a cloudless function, and then it, it runs on top of this 
um, variety of services. And as I said before, these different external services like storage or blockchains or databases can be provided by, by compute providers on the marketplace and like, you know, different providers can provide different services. So Fluence allow, allows your code to discover the right providers and then to make this, all these calls to execute your business use case. Um, another additional great thing about uh, cloudless functions is they um, enforce verifiability and security. So basically every step of the execution being validated by the next node that um, is that executing the next step. So basically when incoming request comes to any node, uh, it takes the request and, and, and sees what was executed before and validates what is executed by the right nodes, what it is, was it executed um, in the right order, and if it's not correct, then it just discards the execution. And as a part of this validation system, we are working on um, adding on-chain validation. So we, we're gonna have, we call it proof of compute, the whole system we kind of call it proof of compute. So we have this step-by-step -step validation of the, of the protocol. Um, and then uh, we're gonna have probabilistic validation of some of cloudless functions on-chain to add even more security to it. Basically this creates you audit, um, you know, auditable traces of the execution and you always can see, you know, were execution done correctly or not, and you can, you know, uh, have the economic um, model, so like the stake is slashed if the execution is incorrect, or the node is rewarded if, if the execution is correct. And um, some examples of, you know, uh, kind of distributed systems that can be expressed in cloudless functions, um, and it's basically any distributed system can be expressed in, as, as a set of cloudless functions, um, you can think of something very simple, like it's kind of technical terms here, but like from simple things like MapReduce or, uh, you know, failover algorithms to more comprehensive, you know, permissionless consensus, uh, multi-party computations with threshold signatures and stuff like that. Because all of these are distributed systems. All of these are network algorithms. All of this um, basically like a protocol, so like coordination between different agents on network. All of this can be expressed as a, as a cloudless functions. And actually like all of this, um, you know, um, includes, besides distributed execution, includes some computations that happen in on peers and overall uh, looks like the computational uh, task. Um, yeah, so, and basically that's uh, simplest uh, explanation of Fluence. There's a huge network of providers, they run cloudless functions, they connect with a variety of storage and blockchains and external services, they can run pure compute, um, and all of this kind of orchestrated by, by these distributed cloudless functions. Um, so the tool set of it is, uh, if you're interested, you can check out at fluence.dev, uh, we, right now we're running uh, it on a testnet called DAR and um, actually uh, the cloudless platform goes live in, in the next couple of weeks in March. Um, uh, so, you know, pay attention, we are basically launching this platform at the mainnet in, in following weeks. Um, and one more thing uh, on the kind of where we are going with all of this because uh, this functions is kind of fundamental thing of how you wire in different compute or different services together. We are distributed uh, permissionless system, um, but we want to, uh, the system to be able to run all kinds of workloads, like because computations as, as like Juan said, and you know, as um, Kyle was touching on it, um, it, it's a wide variety of different um, um, patterns of consuming the computation. So we want to, you know, better enable AI. We want to support machine learning frameworks. For this, we need like GPU support. We need Docker support. We want we need Python support. So it's all actually like on on in the roadmap. It's all coming. Uh, it's not uh, far away. Um, but you know, currently it's we are limited by WebAssembly and you know services that are available right now. But a lot of the things are we are working on, and we want to you know deliver a lot of actually such features um, until the end of the year. Uh, we also thinking um, a lot about you know hardware types um, because some of the tasks require private data to be stored on on the nodes. 
which means um, it can be addressed by either trusted execution environments or things like MPC, where you like with threshold signatures again. Um, so, for example, if you have um, you build a DeFi bot and you need to make a transaction on chain, you don't want to put your private key from your wallet to some you know provider that you don't know. So you're probably going to use MPC uh, subnet on Fluence. Uh, where every provider has only like a share of your private key and cannot really get the, the private key itself, or you're going to trust uh, the hardware that was certified by Intel if you trust Intel. Uh, if some providers run TE, so you're going to put your uh, private key into that. Uh, we also want to allow developers to much easier use this platform compared to like many other crypto protocols. So we're gonna, you know, enable fiat payments. So you just put your credit card and you basically like can immediately get access to all these computer resources like you do in Amazon and many Web2 startups. So why don't we do it for uh, Web3 as well? Uh, we're gonna integrate more data storages. We're gonna do uh, liquid staking because we wanna, you know, with all of this stake locked for hardware, we want more efficient token utilization. So a lot of th these things we are working on and they are coming in, in following months. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it for now from me. Um, thank you so much. That was short, um, how it works. Please.